Finally, in uh, learning objective number five, we're going to look at some caveats regarding financial planning models. What causes growth and what are some caveats surrounding these financial planning models that we're doing? Financial planning models don't always answer the, or ask or answer the right questions. You do the plan. Uh, you do the best you can. Put the most honest assumptions you can put in there. Uh, be careful also. Uh, some some uh, managers may try to lowball sales numbers on you, knowing that they want to beat their target so they get a higher performance bonus. So you have to try and sort that out as you build a relationship with some of the key operating managers you're going to work, be working with as you try to develop these uh, financial planning models. Uh, a lot of these are dependent on accounting relationships, not market value. So uh, you may be understating some things, overstating some things. You have to be careful of that. But basically, all you have is accounting numbers for the most part. And you're going to build your forecast based on last year's accounting figures. So that's the best you have. So uh, build a good relationship with your accounting friends in your business. Uh, three basic elements um, of financial planning models, cash flow, size, risk, and timing tend to get left out a lot of times. Uh, financial planning models themselves don't produce output that gives you meaningful clues about strategies. So you have to develop strategies to do this, to, to hit the sales targets that you're going to uh, put into the model. This does, again, does not give you all the answers. It's an iterative process. Basically, at our large chemical company, we would put a, an initial forecast together. We would run upstairs to the um, CEO and CFO, and sometimes some of the other board of director members would sit in on it. And uh, if it was not sufficient growth, we could kick right down the stairs right away. They would say, insufficient, get out of the room. Uh, you know better than that. Um, sometimes we didn't. We were looking for the answer as to what kind of growth they were looking for. We didn't really get that answer until we iterated several times. Then when we hit the magic number, we knew we were good and the budget and the uh, forecast and the five-year plan was approved, but not until then. We found out at this large chemical company, 17% was kind of a target. In other words, don't go upstairs to the CEO's office without at least a 17% growth in sales. A lot of times the marketing managers would balk at that. They said, we, uh, we can't get blood out of a rock. We can't sell any more catalysts. It's hard to do. The market is tapped. Um, the economy is not that good this year. We're, we can't sell that much. Uh, nevertheless, the uh, CEO would say, we need higher growth rates. So they would push us to increase our sales, lower our costs, and thereby increase our profitability. And all this stuff uh, is all interrelated, the income statement interrelated with the balance sheet, related, both are related to the cash flow. We create the plan, examine the plan, iterate the plan, and finally get it approved, hopefully before the year end. In summary, uh, in session four, you should have learned all about financial planning and its importance in your daily life, especially your professional life. Uh, what kind of models do we use and uh, what kind of planning do we do? Typically, it's a one-year budget and then years two through five, looking at the planning horizon or the long run uh, in form uh, of an income statement, a balance sheet, and a cash flow. And, um, Objective number three, we should have learned how to do the percent of sales approach, heavily used in industry, and you will use it, no doubt, when you go out into the business world. Uh, uh, objective number four, external financing and growth, how much external financing is required if I want to grow at 20% or 25%, as the examples we used in the Rosengarten and Hoffman cases. And finally, what are some caveats regarding financial planning models? Financial planning models don't always ask the right questions, but they will get you hopefully moving in the right direction. Hopefully you've enjoyed session four of Introduction to Finance.